All right, so for this video, we're going to take a look at the smoothing tool. We're going to look over here in the menu where it says smoothing. We're going to hover over. Smoothing groups average the vertex normals with neighboring planes. This allows lighting to behave in a more realistic manner when dealing with edges that are intended to be smooth. ProBuilder decides which edges should be smooth by checking for neighboring faces that are in the same group. It also checks for hard groups, which harden edges of neighboring faces. So let's take a look at how that works. So the first thing I'm going to do is select new shape. All right, and so I'm going to change the shape to say an arch. All right, and we have some faces here. So I'm just going to go ahead and build the arch. Perfect. All right, and the next thing I'll do is go to my vertices selection. And I'm going to select the bottom eight verts here. And I'm just going to drag that down on the Y. About that far. It's not too bad. All right, great. So what is the smoothing tool? Generally, the smoothing tool, as it said, it smooths neighboring faces. So I'm going to off select this for a second. As you can see right now in this area, or just underneath, you can see the individual faces. Um, that means mainly because when the light hits the surface, it's really just hitting each individual, each individual face is has its own lighting representation, right? So without getting super technical, basically each face is lit differently, right? So what smoothing does is any neighboring faces to a smooth face will basically give you the appearance that for instance if I select this face this one this one this one and let's just do one more if I select these faces and make these faces all smooth to one group then this face will actually look like one face because when the light hits it it's acting as if, okay, we're all being lit. We're all going to represent that light from the direction that it's being hit at. So instead of explaining, let me just go ahead and show you. So I'm going to go ahead and click on smoothing. Now with these faces selected, I'm going to hit the number one here. And this is basically different groups. So in this case, we have 23 groups. I'm just going to select one. And you might have saw a slight shift. I'm going to off select this for a second. Now, if you notice, you don't see those faceted individual faces. That's because now the light is represented across those particular faces, almost as if it's one particular face. But if you slide over here where we didn't do that, you can see that you can see the individual lighting hit each individual face. And sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you don't want your light to bounce like that. You want it to be completely smooth. So what we're going to do is select the whole mesh without individual faces. And let's go ahead and select just the one. All right. So what we did now ultimately is select the whole mesh and we made the whole mesh smooth. Every face should be calculated is being calculated by the light together and we technically on something like this I wouldn't want to do that because I only want this top portion and this side portion to smooth into each other I don't want it to try to smooth into the front or the back because this would be if this is an arc this is probably like brick or some type of hard surface so you wouldn't want it to be like a like a like a silly like a spear or a rounded object so what i'm going to do is remove the smoothing from this so if you can see here this is this button here is going to clear the selected faces in our case the whole mesh from us from the smoothing group one so i'm going to select that and now we're back to everything being faceted and not smooth now this time I'm going to select the faces I want specifically smooth. 
So let's do that. I'm going to select the sides here. I'm just going to go around selecting while holding down the shift key. Right. And I'm going to select the one key now. And let's get off of that. All right. So now if you look, this is nice and smooth. It blends into the side. The lighting is hitting it properly. And the front has its it's not smooth that is behaving the way that we would expect it to behave. If you had planes on lighting hitting these two different sides, it wouldn't be smooth on an edge like that. So that looks good. And now you can see that and it looks much nicer. Now, if you can see underneath, it's still faceted. So if we want, we can just go ahead and do the same thing to the inside. Now let's just go ahead and select these faces. All right, perfect. And we can actually put these on a different smoothing group. And I'll put these on two. Perfect. All right. And I'll off select. And so now the inside is nice and smooth. And the outside is nice and smooth at the top. So these are, this is just a quick way to understand how smoothing can work for you. Um, I thought this would be the best way to explain it. Um, I want to show another example of how smoothing can work. I'm going to go ahead and delete this particular arc. I'm going to hit delete and I'm going to create a new poly shape and I'm going to go down to Ico here and I'm going to change the subdivision to one and I'm going to build it. All right, perfect. Now, in this case, Again, you can see the faceted of the sphere. What I'm going to do is apply the smoothing group one to the whole sphere. All right, and now you can see, you don't see the faceted edges of those. You only see the outside of that. And that's just, again, another example of how smoothing works. But why would you apply smoothing in certain situations? Um, just like the arc, that can be a reason why you would apply it. Um, another useful reason would be level of kind of detail. So for instance, let me create another ICO sphere here and I'm going to increase the subdivisions to that, right? And I'm going to go in and build. Now generally these devices or these spheres, they're both spheres. Um, the only difference now though is this one, I'm going to go ahead and remove the smoothing from this for, for, for a second. This one on the right side has more polygons, right? And this one has less. Now, if this was an object on a, on a player, say this was some dangling spheres off of a, an outfit or something, would you use this because it's more round? Or would you use this? Now, you would think this because this looks much better. It's round and everything. And from a distance, you can tell that this is rounder. And if you had this textured, it would look nice. This, on the other hand, you can see the faceted areas of it. And you don't really like it. But with smooth applied, you wouldn't necessarily have the same issue. So let me go ahead and smooth this object. All right. And now that the lighting is applied, let's smooth out. Let's zoom out and take a look. Do you see a difference yet? There might be a very slight difference, but not not enough to use the one on the right side because there's just too many polygons for such a small object. There's just no reason to use it. So I think, again, using smoothing in certain uh, situations uh, really help you keep your polycot down as well. And of course, smoothing this here would even make it even more smooth, of course. But again, there's just no need for that many polygons for an object that's probably going to be so small. So again, this is just another use case for using the smooth tool. All right. And of course, using a smooth tool helps you differentiate between hard edges and softer smooth edges 
So again, um, just keep that in mind when you're modeling your houses or buildings or armor or whatever it is that you may need to model within the Unity editor. All right, and so generally for that, that is smoothing. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, there are some extra options here in smoothing. For instance, you can turn on normals. It'll kind of show you the direction of your normals, um, which way the, the face is basically uh, facing. And there's a few other settings here that I don't particularly use. Um, this is just doing a preview of an object being selected. I don't particularly use the preview settings or this, but generally you just know that they're there if you need them. But generally that is how smoothing works. All right. So in our next video, uh, we'll just take a look at vertex colors.